This episode of Super Mario Odyssey is for your entertainment. It's made possible by the amazing support of viewers just like you. Thank you. We've chased Bowser all the way to the moon. Now it's time to confront him, hopefully once and for all, and stop this wedding before things get really, really out of hand. My name is Brian Saviano. Welcome to the Moon Kingdom. Well, not yet in Super Mario Odyssey. Cappy is on our heads. We are ready to stop this thing. And oh, Mario's looking really dapper right about now. Looking pretty swag. Uh, oh, not many people can pull off the uh, the white tuxedo, the white suit. Uh, I have not been able to do it myself because, well, it would be really expensive. But it uh, uh, it would be really cool. So we'll see. Maybe one day. But yeah, I can never look that good as Mario right now. Got to lose a couple pounds and actually buy a white suit. But maybe for the my wedding, or the wedding, the wedding of the century, not this one, because uh, I'm just wearing a, a red shirt and a red hat, Cappy. I'm wearing Cappy. So there we go. We're on Honeymoon Ridge, the Moon Kingdom. Very ominous looking kingdom. Uh, not very big overall, I would say. Bowser's Moon Wedding. And that's our prime objective, is to go all the way to the front of the cathedral and stop this wedding. Well, don't you look dapper. That's what I said. Those two must be over there. No time to dilly-dally. Let's go. So that is exactly what we're going to do. Now, there are no um, no moons for us to be required to, to get them right now. Uh, most of them will open up as soon as we are done. Um, I believe this kingdom is a smaller one with only 50 uh, purple coins available. So we're going to be going after those. Uh, obviously, there's a ton right here. And the gravity is definitely changed because, well, we're on the moon. So obviously, it would be a little bit different than it normally is. Yes, there are only 50. So keep that in mind. Uh, this does come in handy... Uh, Physics-wise, when we are not on the moon, well, rather, when we're not going to try and stop the wedding, this actually uh, changes up quite a bit. There's a lot more to do. So we're going to go after some of the purple coins now, but obviously the main objective is to beat the game. This is one of the few areas where the game kind of lets you or kind of makes you go and finish the game. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, yeah. So, what is over around here? I don't think any other moons are kind of... Actually, there's one right here. I mean, yeah. There's this one. All right. So, let's long jump around this way. There we go. All right. We'll long jump over here as well. Make sure we get a perfect shot. Yes, we did. Beautiful. So, the moons over here are uh, gold or yellow, peach colored. I think that would make sense. But, there you go. Taking notes on the moon surface. So, yeah, we're just going to go right for it, because also in this episode, we're going to be talking about the game in general. The uh, end credits are also a thing. Uh, we will get to that. That's going to be fantastic. There are six um, six uh, purple coins right there. That might be the most purple coins I've seen in an area at one time. So that's interesting. I think there is a way for you to get up there without having to go and enter this area here. So quiet wall. Watch out, the hole back there is real deep. So I think there is a way for you to get back up there. I think there's a, um, like a flower that spawns in right here that you can fly up. But yeah, as of right this second, you can't get up there. Um, there are speedrunners who do this stuff professionally and they go really fast throughout the entire game. I don't know how they do it, but there's probably a way to do it. So this is the inside of the moon. In case you thought it was a bunch of cheese, it's not cheese. Now, uh, you can go back up to the surface right over there. So one of the things I didn't realize about this area, right here, there's actually something you can take over. And if you didn't see it, I don't blame you. It's that statue right there. That's one of the very few remaining things I never got captured in order to like fill out our log here. So you can't go any faster. But there is a moon inside of here. So I believe there is a capture log we can take a look at as well. Um, we'll go to lists. Yes, capture lists. So you can see all these captured items here. Um, we are missing a ton of them. 
but we do have a lot of them as well. There's 52. I thought there were 72 for some reason. So 52, that is one of them right there. Um, now we're going to fill another one by having a, a flying dry bones right here. So a lot of these actually you don't get access to until the end of the game, and especially in this area right here. So if you're like, okay, I'm going to try to fill this out as much as possible until the, uh, you know, the end of the game, uh, or rather before the end of the game, a lot of it you actually can't, so keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to destroy this for um, this uh, queen heart right here. Get that taken care of, the life up heart. Okay, we'll dive over this way. Should take over dry bones, but we don't have to do that. We can just jump right on over. There you go. Everybody's wearing the very dapper hats, just like uh, they're ready for the wedding. Uh, I don't know if they're invited, but they are wearing the hats nonetheless here. So here you go. We're going to activate this. And I believe we can just skip over. Like, we can long jump right over here. We don't get hit by Hammer Bros as it is. So I don't know if the Hammer Bro is different from the Frying Pan Bro. They are the same green color. So they might be the same technically in the log, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, yeah, but just make sure you uh, time this out properly. Uh, probably a ton of coins inside of these item boxes right here. Yeah, there's a ton in there. Yeah, there you go. Nice. All right, get rid of all these, and then jump, evacuate from there, and there you go. Ooh, these guys, these Wiggler guys, okay. So now we'll probably take over them because it's going to be useful in some capacity for us here. And we can't reach over there. That's great. All right, we'll avoid you. Um, Let's see. Ooh, there's some coins over here. Might as well get, get those while we're here, right? All right, we'll go reach all the way around here. And there's some purple coins, too. Um, this is actually one of the final areas I conquered in my 100% playthrough because it was just, um, just the last area. I wanted to do the moon last and, uh, you know, just get that done in that order. And then, oh man, that's a bonsai bill. Okay. Big old bonsai bill. This is actually, um, a means to get a secret moon around here as well. Um, if I can figure it out, that would be great. Um, I think if I stay right here... There's one way over there. That's the one that I'm looking for. Um, come on, go. Oh, dang it, I messed it up. Mm, yep, okay, sure. Uh, what if I stay right here? Does that help my case? Uh, come on. No, 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 okay, yep. Yep, figured that, okay. So there's a bullet, like, you have to use the bullet bill to go all the way down that way. So, basically for this one, yeah, you gotta go way, 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 way down. So, see if I can avoid this. There you go. Um, go. Do I use this one? I think I do. I must, right? What other one would I use? I forget, actually. So you shake the Wii, the Wii remote, the Switch remote to go even faster. Go, 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 go. Nope, that's not gonna work. It's too slow. No, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. Go, go. Yes, there you go. Cool. So there's one of the moons over here in that chest right there. Boom, there you go. Um, I don't know if there's any... Or do we go back this way? Does that work? Oh, we get launched all the way back over there. Okay, cool. So it doesn't make us reset the entire thing, but that's a uh, basically a one-way trip for the um, that uh, electrical wire there, so that's pretty cool. So that one does take a little bit of skill, so if you don't get that one right away, that's uh, totally fine. Um, just skip over that, take all those, there we go, nice. Cool. So, okay. Um, I am going to use this. Go over here. Okay. Um, go. Yes. Perfect timing. Perfect. Look at that. Flawless. Absolutely flawless. Okay. So that's one of the final areas up there. That's going to be our goal. And hello, Charging Chuck. First time we're seeing you in-game. So... Part of, like, this game right here makes me believe that we're going to see a Super Mario Odyssey 2 at some point. Because if they're not doing DLC for this any further, like, uh, you know, Mario Sunshine or whatever, like the Delfino Island like I was talking about before, like, why have characters like Charge and Chuck if you're only going to feature them in the very last level of the game? Like, that doesn't really make a ton of sense. And they never appear anywhere else in the entire game beyond this point. They never appear anywhere. So it's like... There really isn't a point to just have them right here. Why not use them 
in a second game or in the DLC or something like that. So I think for that reason, they're going to reuse a lot of the assets from this game in order to make a Super Mario DLC. Oh, geez. Or Mario Odyssey 2. Big Mama's back. And the chain chomps alive. He's got the wedding hats. Oh, boy. All right. Hmm. Do you remember me? That I, Why do I use that voice for everything? I use it for literally everything. Uh, you were ever so rude to me back in the Cascade Kingdom. It felt like it was yesterday that happened. In fact, you were quite rude to all my darling Brutals, which is why we're all here now. Now, I do believe it's lunchtime for my newly powered up Chain Chompykins. Well, Chain Chompykins, I guess I'm just going to have to take care of you the first way that I took care of you that time. So, we'll take over you. Boss battle is a little bit more difficult, but the same idea. Run away from Big Mama and uh, just, you know, whack her in the face with her pet chain jump. That's how you take care of that. And you want to avoid this. And, okay, so that doesn't we, that doesn't help get rid of the hats right there. But, so you can't do it while the chain jump is spinning around. You just got to run away. Uh, boss battle is still pretty easy overall. You might die once or twice, but... It's not that difficult. All right, and that's not gonna work. Ooh, tons of hats on you, buddy. Lots and lots of hats here. Okay, I don't wanna get in the way. I don't think she'll actually attack you. Just a chain chomp will, and oh boy. Ooh, one heart already. Okay. Ooh, just bumped right into me there. Do I not have any hearts, really? Jeez, okay. Um, there you go, I guess we don't need them, cool. As long as she doesn't grab you, I think you'll be good. Third time's the charm, and boop. See you later, Big Mama. It was a pleasure. It was an absolute pleasure battling against you forever and ever. But now, the time has come. Bye-bye. No moon. No nothing gained from that at all. But now, you can get on your merry way. And I'm shaking the, um, the pro controller. That way we can go a little bit quicker there. So that's how that works. And uh, now, we are right at the very top of where we want to be to prevent this wedding from happening. There's a little reward for uh, completing it. We have this uh, stack of gold coins right here. Very nice. Look at that shot. Beautiful. Absolutely amazing. That's what my uh, cathedral is going to look like when I get married. You're all invited, by the way. Well, some of you, maybe. Hurry. I will hurry. Quick, quick. I know. Like, you can go around here and jump all on top of there, but we're not going to do that right now. Maybe later. We'll see. Can't promise anything right now. But let's go stop this wedding, shall we? Can't allow any of this to happen. And just like it would be for a wedding... I love how there's no music. Just hear the church bells. Let's stop this wedding, shall we? One, two, three. Excuse me. You oversized turtle, get your hands off of my woman. That's what's going to happen to my wedding, too. She's going to be marrying some big brute that isn't me. And then it's like, no, get away from her. That's a big ring, though. If I were if I were Peach, I'd be impressed. I'm like, that's, that's pretty impressive. You know? Uh-oh. Those fingers, he's like... <laughs> that's so ominous and creepy. Ugh. Awful. What you gonna say, Bowser? He's huge, by the way. Uh-oh. Cappy, save me! Please! And... No, okay. Efforts are futile. That's fine, though. We still got it. We good. Looks like the final arena here. Bowser still looking extremely dapper throughout the entire journey. Hi! Oh, no, that's how you're going to treat your wife? Okay. Well, haha, -ha, crashing the wedding, Mario. That's tacky, even for you. Also, your outfit isn't halfway fancy enough for the occasion. Not that it matters, since you weren't invited. So now it's time for you to make like a bouquet and get thrown out. Or get given to one of the bridesmaids who's always single and just happens, hasn't happened to find the love of her life yet. It makes it really awkward for one of the groomsmen when... You know, they're walking down the aisle together, and then the bridesmaid catches it. It's a whole thing. Here's your happily ever after, and they jump you right into the boss battle right there. It's great. So now you're going to chase after Bowser just like you did before. Uh, Bowser is a little bit more difficult 
There's a little bit more to the phases of him, but it's the same relative idea. Go up and punch him to pieces. And just like last time he uh, swooped his tail, he's gonna do that again. Just punch him to pieces again, and you're gonna do this three times, and that's all it takes, baby. That'll teach you. Yeah, really awkward when that happens and the, uh, the bridesmaid gets the bouquet and all that. What is this? Oh, I forgot about this. You wanna do a side dodge in order to avoid this. Uh, first time I did that, it was extremely difficult for me to figure out what to do. But yes, you want to do like, like move to the side really quickly and then jump. That's what you want to do. So keep that in mind. But now we're going to battle against Bowser. Once and for all, hopefully. Never ever again for it to happen. Avoid the giant flaming spike balls of fury. And just punch him. As he's maniacally laughing, trying to defeat you. And jump, and jump, and good. And boom, there you go. Maybe we can do this in a flawless run. Who knows? I don't know. Because I don't know how this goes. All right. He's going to do this and then whoop. And then sidestep. Cap. And then sidestep. And how am I avoiding this? I have no idea. He, ooh, that was a close one too. I think I should have got burned on that one. I definitely should have got burned on that. But, yeah, that sidestep is very key. Otherwise, you're going to lose a ton of, um, ton of health very quickly. All right, can we go for the flawless run here? Just jump in. It's not an overly complicated battle. I thought the battle in Super Mario uh, Galaxy was a lot harder than the one in Odyssey, but that's just me. All right, so one, two, three, and then come on, and then four, and cut, Plowy. See you later, Bowser. Catch you on the flip side, buddy. And now, you're totally left defenseless. You ain't looking dapper. None of that stuff. You're done. See ya. And just like that, the the ring that meant so much and was worth so much money just disappears as if it were dropped down the drain. And Peach is finally set free, along with Kepi's sister, Tiara. I, okay. There's a giant cosmic cube in the way. Has something to do with something. Is the moon going to explode? If that happened in real life, that'd be very bad. All well, the tides would get messed up. There'd be no light during the dark. Not great. As they both fall into the abyss of the moon. Somehow, those rocks that fell in front of me and Peach kind of look like the rocks that we've seen on our journey so far. I don't know if that has anything to do with anything, but, you know. Let's uh, go investigate and see what's going on here. Oh, that, that's falling. Death, death, death. No, go. There we go. Nice. Hey, Peach. Um, what are we going to do? Um, the only logical thing is to become Bowser. And that is the first time this ever happens ever. And when this happened, I was like, no way. No way. That's sick. And this is really sick, too. So you become Bowser. You see all throughout the years all the different boss battles from Super Mario 64, obviously in Odyssey, Super Mario World, Super Mario Brothers, it's great. And then you have become Bowser, it's awesome. And Peach is just like, all right, I accept this. This is fine. But I guess Tiara doesn't take over Peach. And look at that. One of the coolest sequences in an end game I've ever experienced ever where you can play as Bowser, clawing and breathing fire as you escape the moon. Really, really cool. Really, really awesome. So you want to make sure you go as fast as you possibly can. Keep on moving. You can't run, unlike in um, Mario Odyssey. You know, you can like typically like long jump or whatever, but you can triple jump. You can breathe fire to clear out some obstacles by shaking the uh, Switch Pro Controller or the Joy-Con, whatever you have going for you there. Um, so keep that in mind. That's a thing. Um, what's also really cool, so right here, we're breaking the rock, just like we did in the beginning of the Cascade Kingdom. It's almost like they were related somehow. I have no idea how that works. And what's also really cool, how are we going to get up this wall? Well, you go inside the warp pipe, and you become 2D Bowser from Super Mario World. How cool is that? That's insanely cool. So we're going to get out of here, and I guess Bowser can break nine blocks at a time, which is totally fine, and definitely makes sense, because he's Bowser. He's definitely... A lot more evil and sinister than um, a lot of people may realize here. All right, so let's just jump a little bit further here. Okay, and can I make it? There we go. Nice. We did it in one shot. That that area can get a little bit tricky, 
and I recommend uh, using some fireballs ahead of when you get toward these walls because it will help you go a little bit faster as well. And then just block them out of the way. There we go. Slice and dice this entire thing here. You do have six lives, so you have plenty of time to go where you need to go. And this is it, ladies and gentlemen, the final area of Super Mario Odyssey. I see the outside. We're almost there. I certainly hope so. It's been quite the journey. So what you want to do is take care of these pillars. There's all these things that are going to fall from the sky, these little bits of cheese that are going to fly everywhere. You got to make sure you don't touch them. Don't touch them, and you'll be fine. And all these rocks and boulders, they're all trying to stop you for some reason. They don't want the, the giant moon to disappear into nothing. So uh, use the fireballs to destroy these. And we're going to destroy the giant cosmic cube, the one that Loki is after in Avengers. The exact same one. That's the one we're going to be going after ourselves. I promise they're identical. They are completely identical. And now, what else is left to do than to go to the giant piece of cheese in the middle? It's falling apart. Quick get to the middle. Let's go. This is going to be our means to destroy the moon. Go. Cheese. Go. Cheese. Go. There it is, and you know what the best way to leave the moon is? Is to hop on a power rail and to get out of there. Just charge up and see you later. So if you ever get stuck on the moon, there's a power line that goes right from the moon all the way back to the earth. You'll be good. Totally, totally good. Don't even worry about it. Or go back to the moon, surface of the moon, whatever. And just conveniently enough, land right there. Bowser's defeated, totally. And Peach just very elegantly lands. She's just like, this is good. We're good. Cool. And they can be reunited once more. And they both look really good while doing it. And now Cappy and his sister are back. Awesome. Which it's kind of weird that Mario and Peach have a thing for each other, but then it's Cappy and his sister, not Cappy and his wife or girlfriend. But, you know, whatever. Aw. They're like, oh, they're going to kiss. They're going to kiff. It's going to be great. And then, nope. <laughs> he just gets sucker punched by Bowser. He's got a bouquet of uh, piranha plants. Uh-oh. Who is she going to accept? Who would that be? Come on. Pick Mario. Maybe Bowser. I don't know how you roll. Whatever. And then, nope. She ain't having none of that. That's that girl power right there. It's 2018. Anything can happen. She's like, come on, Cappy and Tiara. We out here. We out. And she just, <laughs> they're both like, hey man, we're gonna call it a truce. We call this a truce. <laughs> That's the best thing. It's awesome. She's like, adios. Here, you just gonna steal my ship? All right, bye. Mario's gonna go after it. Oh, they, I mean, man, that's just awesome. It's so cool. And Mario, go for it. Uh-oh, leave Bowser in the dust. And then, boom. My hat hair, all intact as we complete Super Mario Odyssey. The first time through, the story is complete. So as I typically do with these games, I um, talk about how I feel about them in the uh, the credits. So this is the, uh, the credits for Super Mario Odyssey. Um, I played this game to completion 100% one time. Uh, I have played this game, completed the story. My can of soda is falling. Um, three times. So this is my third time, and it's still just as enjoyable as when I played it the first time. Uh, Mario Odyssey, I have not gotten sick of. I could play over and over and over again. Um, it's slowly becoming one of my favorite games of all time, just because of how good it looks, how well it plays, how much I can do with Mario, how much the environments are so diverse. Like, there's a lot going on, and there's so much content here for $30, $30, yeah, okay. It'll never go down to $30, $60. There's so much here, and there's just so much love put into this game that, you know, you look at games that are made nowadays, a lot of, like, pay to win, or, you know, you got loot boxes, or whatever you got, and then you have a game like this, where Nintendo makes extremely quality products for people to enjoy, and at a fair price, where, if this came out with a $20 DLC, if this came out with a $40 DLC, I'd buy it instantly. Like, I would be so totally down for that. And 
they deserve it because this game is just awesome. There's so much, so much to do, and there's so much we haven't done in this playthrough yet. There's still entire other phases to other levels we haven't even touched on yet. There's hundreds more moons to go after. I've invested, um, I think 60 or 70 hours into this game uh, total, and it's all flown right by. And I'm constantly impressed with all the little details where everything makes sense. Everything that you think you can do, you can do. And like I said before, I think it was in the Luncheon Kingdom, you don't break any of the levels. All the levels make sense. Like, they give you Mario and say, hey, these are Mario's moves. You can do whatever you want with the levels. Like, you're never cheating the game. You're just using the game's mechanics to its best advantage. Like, you're taking full advantage of everything this game has to offer. And that's what I love about Super Mario Odyssey. Um, really great seeing Mario in the white tuxedo outfit. Same for Bowser. Like, it's just, it does something really different, but also very Mario at the same exact time. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the point of the game where I nearly cried. So now we're going to go into the next phase of the game and uh, take it from there. So thank you for watching. Let's go.